Hello and welcome to another edition of Inspired by Today. I have the pleasure and honor to speak to the one and only Mr. Fortune himself, James Fortune. How you doing? Oh man, I'm good, man. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Man, definitely. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me and inspire everyone that's listening because we all have, you know, different stories, different upbringings, different yeah. backgrounds. Um, but it, it's all pointed towards eternity and to, for a purpose. So I appreciate Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, man. No, thank you. I'm excited, man. Thank you for having me. For sure. So you have been on, I guess, the, the mainstream of gospel music since about 2004 or so. But yeah, I mean, yeah. 2000, 2005. Yeah, 2005, actually. Yeah, 2004. The, the, first, the first album came out in 2004, You Survived. Like yeah. I, think, I think around September of 2004. Right, right. And, uh, and I'm sure you've been dealing with music way longer than that. But just from what uh, the majority knows you from, how has God provided for you to sustain this longevity? You know what? It's really been, um, man, a blessing, the favor of God. It, it's, it had, it's had highs, it has lows. But, uh, you know, God is truly, truly... Um, just had his hand on me through it all. I think the most important thing to remember is that, you know, we don't call ourselves, our purpose was not created by ourselves, that God calls us to this, you know, whatever it is that we're fulfilling, whatever it is that we're doing. And so I think for me, uh, I had to be able to put it and really trust God's hand. I know I, I know I sung a lot about trusting God, but it was moments and, and a lot of times throughout this journey where I had to really trust him, uh, you know, with my whole heart and trust his plan, even when I couldn't understand the real process that he was taking me through behind it. Wow. Yeah, because, I mean, and then not only has he done all what you stated for you, but he has just taught you so many lessons and things yeah. lessons that he's taught you. You've been able to pour into us as, you know, your fans or and listeners of your music. Yeah, I think that's where, you know, as a songwriter, that's kind of where it comes from. You know, I, I don't a lot of people always hit me up a lot of times about, hey, man, you got a song for me here. You got a song for me there. And 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 occasionally there is. But a lot of times man, I just write through my own experiences, you know, and I, I don't I don't even really try to do a lot of outside writing because um, it's just kind of like, you know, I think what God gives to me a lot of times is for me to give to the people. I'm always open to it. You know, sometimes I've, I've been blessed to write for, you know, some amazing artists like, of course, my brother Zacardi Cortez and also Pastor Shirley Caesar and, and, and a few others. But for the most part, man, what I go through, I write about it and I share it. And I because I believe a lot of time we're we're confused. We think we're the only ones who go through certain storms or certain tests or certain trials. But somebody else is going through the same thing that you're going through or has been through it or is going to go through it. Uh, and I think a lot of times we have to stop being um, afraid of it and just say, hey, God, I'm here to be used by you being used by God. A lot of time we think that means like on a big platform or at the Grammys, sometimes being used means being humiliated or it means being, you know, uh, he, you know, because at the end of the day, it's all for the glory of God. We want the glory. But at the end of the day, God, you get the glory through my life. And sometimes it doesn't feel good. It doesn't it doesn't um, it isn't uh, what we want, but it's oftentimes what we need. Wow, that's good right there, man. That, yeah, man. right there, man. And and I I definitely ag agree to it because it is through it is through our imperfections in some of those ways that he uses us where he is shown to others. Yeah, it reminds us that we're that we are human, and sometimes even as a um, you know as a celebrity or, or whatever it is, you can you can get lost in all of that, and you can think it's about you. And sometimes God has to 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 humble us. You know, He has to remind us that you know it's not it's not us. It's us. It's Him working through us. <laughs> you know, it's like at any moment, um, if you feel like it's you can become arrogant and you become prideful. And the Bible says that God resists the proud. You know, he, he, he's an opponent. He opposes the proud. Uh, if you want to go to battle with God, be prideful because he says that he will oppose you. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a fight. I don't want to take on. And, right. Uh, so you have a new song out. It's going to happen with you and Isaac Curry. Yeah. Uh, really love the song. And I'm going to show you how much I love the song here in a second. Uh, but I just wanted to 
talk to you about y'all's chemistry because you you all are on uh, you do the IG show together and yeah, so have a lot of fun. So how did y'all's chemistry come together to make this song happen? Yeah, man, you know we, we you know he's one of my best friends, so that was pretty easy. We've been you know even on the music side beyond the friendship. You know he's been on just about every album I've released, so it was great to be able to. This is the first single. He had a single out that I was on entitled But God, but it was great to have a single that I released that he was featured on yeah. uh, because, like I say, we are great friends. We do do the, the Fortress Live talent show together every Monday night. And um, so our, our chemistry is easy. You know, that was that was one that was just like it was natural. We didn't have to force anything. We just we just did it. And I think it was great. And uh, I love the message. I love that people are being blessed by it. No, it, most most definitely. And I just think uh just how how you work in in what you do and just your your life and how and what we know of it i i just feel like you are like you're just walking hope yeah uh you know people a lot of times um you know they would they would label me like the encourager you know and just i, I think for me it's kind of what i've um i didn't I, when i first started doing ministry you know of course my dad's a pastor so i grew up you know, as a pastor's son, and my grandfather was also a pastor for 50 years. So I always watched my dad. Just, he never had a big church. He didn't have a mega church. He didn't have a lot of money, but he was always about the people. You know, it was never about uh, him and being a celebrity. Or it was like he he would be out helping people and, and giving away food. And and as a as a child, I was I was raised by my dad actually. So watching that example, um, I think really really was what made me passionate about not doing ministry for I, when I was doing this, it was never about, I never even knew I was going to put an album on. I just had a, a youth choir in Houston, Texas, you know, just, but from there, you know, God began to bless it, but it's really been encouraging people. And it's just not being afraid to share, you know, um, yeah, I've, 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 yeah, I've won awards. Yes, I've done this. I've done tours. I've traveled the world, but at the end of the day, that's not what's, the success is what we like to talk about, but the scars is what really helps people heal, you know, letting them know, letting them see uh, and discussing some of the some of the moments in your life that weren't um, your best decisions or your best moments or your highlights. See, we we love the highlight reel. You know, nobody likes the blooper reel. But, um, a lot of times, man, it's that it's letting people see the human side of you and the flaws that really helps God get the glory out of your life. For sure. So that so that's a, a unique way to grow up. Um, being raised by your father as a pastor, your grandfather a pastor, did you feel uh, any pressure in being the child and, and grandchild to two pastors? Yeah, uh, not really. I'm gonna be honest, man. My dad wasn't he wasn't like super strict, you know. He he uh, even growing up, you know, through high school, you know, I, I, I mean, I was heavy into sports and stuff like that. It wasn't, of course, you know, church was a was a must. It wasn't an option, you know. It was mandatory, but it was. Um, I didn't feel the pressure to be a pastor. I, I didn't feel the pressure to do ministry. You know, it's kind of just something that I that I loved to do uh, at an early age. I started out playing my for my dad's church as a drummer at five years old. So I was just kind of always around it, you know, even though I was heavy into sports and other things as well. But it's like ministry was just it was something that I couldn't run from. I tried, you know, I tried to, when I graduated high school, I, I moved to, um, I went to college at California state in Northridge in the Valley. I wanted to do, you know, radio, television, and film. I wanted to get into like film and stuff. And um, <laughs> it was cool, you know, but at the end of the day, man, God's plans will prevail. So I ended up back in Houston, you know, uh, and that's when I started the ministry. So, so getting back to your song is going to happen. I need you to do me a favor. If, if you haven't already, like there's so many things in this song that you can make. I just want t-shirts for a bunch of <laughs> that you say in this song. You say, uh, I threw in the towel and God threw it back. Yeah, yeah. Whoever, whoever counted you out can't count. Yeah, yeah. You won't break down. You're about to get a breakthrough. Yeah. Uh, you got to see it before you see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always say this, man, because you know, so I don't, I don't, like I don't do a bunch of singing, so I always share like with who I'm working with. Like if I say something, I need to say something. You know, I'm I can't I can't do runs. I can't you know do all that uh, like a lot of the great singers. But I believe that it's not the best singer; it's the best communicator uh, that's most effective. And so I just try to make sure I just say little things that can really, like I say, be memorable and people can remember to encourage them um just along the way even a lot of times you you get that in the slow songs the ballads but even in an up-tempo 
a song that's a bop, I still want to give that same type of uh, encouragement as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I loved it. I loved it. I'm just, I, I was just replaying it like, because I wanted to make sure I, I grasped it. I <laughs> these is these are gems in the midst oh, of a song. <laughs> oh man, thank you, Stoke. Hey, at least I at least I know you definitely listened to the song. <laughs> yeah, <we'll be> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah they'd be like, man, I love your song. Like, what part you love? Man, all of them. All of them. They'd be like, man, I got all your albums. Oh man, what was your favorite one? Oh, the one uh you know, the one with, the, with I trust you on. <laughs> hey, I got I got you, I got you. Yeah. And I know sometimes it's not that they lying, but it's like off the top of the head, sometimes when you get put on the spot like that, oh, what was your favorite one? It's like, uh, so no, nah, but man, I appreciate you. No, for sure. It's like, I mean, because I, on like, just a side business, I make, you know, the inspirational shirts, and I'm like, man, I got to yeah. tell him, I got to yeah. give him the first shot, because if he don't, <laughs> like, we're going to do something. No, nah, do your, hey, do your things, though. Do your thing, bro. I really love that, especially, um, Especially the, when you said whoever counted you out can't count because yeah. we live in this social society where we're looking at the followers, the likes, the views, the streams, what yeah. it's like, and we lose sight of who we really do it for, even those who of us who claim to do to do it. And I, I have to admit myself, like I uh like every month. Every once in a while, I'll look and say, "Oh, where? What was our ratings this month?" Yeah. Just, yeah. So you know, career and job for it's like, man, if nobody listened to you, you still here. Yeah, yeah. But and, and honestly, still, like, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, fate without works is dead. You know, I don't think at the same time, like what you're saying, it's not good for us to just. I'm gonna just sit back and let God do it. You know, a, a, a lot of times, you know, we do, and and we and we can be. Not competitive in a sense of I'm competing with other people, but I'm trying to be the best version of myself. And so even if I look at certain things, if you're looking at stream, it's like, OK, what can I do better? You know what I'm saying? Like, I know God is doing his thing. God, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, how can I be more effective? I think that's as believers, sometimes we just try to put it all on God when he's like, no, it's something that you got to do as well. You know, there's some there's some there's some work. There's some grind that you got to put in um, uh, at the same time. So, you know, I always say, you know. We do we do what we do in the natural, and then God will add some super to our natural. But at the end of the day, we got to make sure we do our part. Yeah, I, I I'm not even lying. I said I said that yesterday. Yeah, on my show because the Bible, like you talked about, says you have to have faith and works. Uh huh. It also says that we have to be hearers and doers. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because yep, absolutely. <laughs> It, it, what, what, I mean, what good is it, what good does it do, though, for us to hear, and then just we 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 do nothing what, with what we you know heard from God? I think a lot of times we are a lot of people are hearers, but then their their fear kicks in, so fear paralyzes them from ever doing. So they hear, but they never do because of fear. So it's like, okay, there was the disciples were in the boat, you know, and so Peter said, "Listen, I can't be like the rest of y'all. Like, I gotta bust a move. I gotta go. I gotta. I gotta." I got to walk on water. I'm coming to him. Yeah, so yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, okay, what are you going to do? Are you going to be in the boat? Or are you going to say, you know what? I know God is calling me to, to the deep. He's calling me out of this comfortable situation. A lot of times it's uncomfortable to go uh, where he tells us to go. But if we do it, uh, we'll be able to do things that people will not believe. Yeah, because there, like, there is so much. I think we underestimate the impact behind our doing. Yeah. God, God gives us a word that is going to directly impact us. It has to, but it's also going to reflect off of us and touch others. Because just with the story that you are referencing to with Peter on the boat, like there's a, eleven other people on the boat. <laughs> right, right, absolutely, and, and that's the thing. Like what, you're gonna be one. You're gonna be the one. You're gonna be like the other eleven. You're gonna be with the crowd. You're gonna be able to move out and be like, hey, I'm, I'm not a follower. Like I'm a leader. I'm a bust right. a move. So. Yeah, man, that's that's good though. But then when he when he heard the word, he took the action of walking on the water, and then but because of his action and Jesus and him coming back to the boat together, the other eleven's eyes were open and yeah. was like, this has to be. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> it must be. Yeah. yeah that's what that's when we talk about God getting the glory. So you know. 
for us to for God to really get the glory. Sometimes you got to call us to some things that blow our mind like, wait, this doesn't make any sense at all. It's not supposed to make sense. God created sense. He's God over sense. So at the end of the day, it's our faith. It's, it's we walk by faith and not by sight. And a lot of times we cannot see it. We do not understand it, but we do trust God and we walk because of what God has told us, because we're not just hearers, we're doers as well. Right. Because it's like so I want to ask you along these lines, like when you were when you got that call, it's like, hey, we want to sign you to this record deal. Like, <laughs> yeah, like what, what kind of impact did that have on you? It was it was it was incredible. You know, it was it is it was independent label. So, yeah, it was based out of Houston, Texas. And it was just a blessing because I had, you know, received so many no's and and, mm-hmm. and doubt had begun to creep in, you know, um, you begin to question your own call and you begin to question, you know, am I really called to do this? Uh, should I be doing something else? So at the end of the day, when that happened, it was kind of like confirmation. And then to have my first song, You Survived, to be a really, really great song for me. And it did really well. And I was able to go on a, a big tour, like out the gate, you know, as an opening act. You know, um, it was just it was like, wow. But things begin to happen after that. And the more, the more and more God began to reveal his purpose through my life. And I begin to walk in obedience. It's like doors begin to open, but I share with people. Um, I was just talking to some people yesterday. It's like many times if you're not grounded, if you're not rooted, mm-hmm. what, what, a, what should be a blessing can actually be a distraction. It can actually be. Uh, and, and I think that blessings make six people, blessings make sick people sicker so at the end of the day the more you give someone who's not ready to handle it it only makes them worse than where they are so a lot of times what we think we want we're not really ready for uh, it reminds me of my son who um he had made honor roll so i took him to the store store and i was like hey pick out what you want i was excited for him he was like eight at the time so he brought me something back i was pleased with him i wanted to bless him because he had worked hard and uh he and i and i flipped the toy over and it said 10 and up now, of course, uh, he was only eight. So even though I wanted to to make him happy and I, w- I was pleased with him, it, he did what he was supposed to do. I understood as the manufacturer understood that giving him this too soon could be more damage than harm. That he was not even though he wanted it, uh, he was not ready for it. Even though I was pleased with him, I couldn't give it to him just yet because there was some more development that needs to happen. So um, in that, a lot of times as you're praying uh, to everyone who's watching, as you're asking God to open doors, make sure that before God opens that door, um, that you're ready to handle it, that you're not trying to get in the tenant up door uh, when you're only at a level eight. Yeah, because he can't he can't break his promises. Yeah, if it's for you is going to be for you because uh, I talk to my wife about this frequently. To go along with your saying is David was called to be king when he was 17. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he wasn't sitting on the throne. No. Mm-mm. You know, yeah. he was 30. So it's like, can you handle being occupied where God has you until he knows you're prepared to? Yeah, I, I always share do the duty of the moment because I believe that moment is preparing you for your next moment. So it's like, OK, instead of complaining where you are, instead of being frustrated or comparing, do what like in that moment operate it, do it as into the Lord, because he always uses um, uh, moments and seasons to prepare us for greater season development, as I was speaking about earlier. So I agree with you, man. That That is exactly right. A lot of times we we get frustrated. We like, you know, there's more and there is more. But you got to do you can't you can't go into high school in ninth grade and, 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 and finish ninth grade and say, all right, I'm ready to graduate. Like there's there's some more steps. There's some more tests you have to pass. Uh, there's some more things you have to go through uh, before you can really graduate to that level that you want. Yeah, there are those those, those prereqs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a lot of times, you know, we want to skip steps. And sometimes, you know, God does put us in a season where he allows us to skip steps. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's just really being prayerful and, and trusting the plan and the purpose that he has for your life, uh, not someone else's. Woo. Oh, man, man, man. Uh, this, is, this is heavy stuff right here. Um, but I would like you to, to fill in the blank with this sentence. And you, it doesn't have to be one word. It can be as many words as you want it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am James Fortune, and I am inspired by blank. Okay. So, so say, say that whole line? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I'm James Fortune and I'm inspired by my kids. Uh, My kids continue to inspire me um, just the way they're able to uh, just be 
just be better than me already. I mean, I love the fact that I spend time with them. You know, like I told you earlier, so growing up, being raised by my father, um, you know, it was just it was so important for me to be a good father as well. You know, just having a great example. Uh, and so to see them now, you know, uh, my oldest daughter, she already graduated high school in one more year. And my son has two more years. And then my youngest, uh, my other daughter has three more. But just, I man, just to see how, how much they love God and, and how much they're, you know, excited about, even though there's a lot more thrown at them than it was when I was their age, uh, they're still grounded, they're still focused. Uh, and so they inspire me each and every day to continue uh, to be the best version of myself that I can for them. Wow. That's that's huge. That's huge. Um, I don't want to let you go without, you know, sharing anything else that you have coming up or any other words of encouragement to those that are watching and listening. Uh, no, it's been great. So I would just say, man, of course, if you don't have it's going to happen featuring Isaac Kareem, make sure you stream and download it, add it to your playlist. And you can check us both out together as well on Fortune's Live Talent every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. Somebody came and need the breakthrough. I like this song just for you.